Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. This is Alice Garage and today is a good day because the engine block is back. So we're going to start assemble the engine. We're going to paint the block, put in the crankshaft and assemble and put in the pistons. Before we start assembling the engine, I want to show you all of the parts and of course the engine block. Yes, and here we have the engine block. I'm very happy with the results and the service that uh, LU Trim has uh, given me. They were very fast and took uh, very good care of the engine block. The things that they have done is uh, made the cylinder diameter bigger to 895 millimeters. They have smoothed out the surface so we know that it's now nice and uh, flat. And they also gave the engine block a buff. And they have also made sure that my crankshaft is nice and straight and balanced and it was actually in uh, such a good condition that it didn't have to like grind down the surface to make it uh, round again because it wasn't needed because usually you need to grind the crankshafts because they are uneven so you put in a bigger bearing but it simply wasn't needed on this crankshaft so they only polished the, the surface up and they supplied me with these bearings these are ACL bearings. These, this is very good quality. It's for race engines and engines that you put some upgrades into. These will hold. And here we have all of the parts that I have ordered. All of these parts are from speeding.nu. You should definitely go and check them out if you need any performance parts for your car. They are very nice and they help you to get exactly what you need. The only parts that aren't from them are these. These are stainless steel exhaust valves. I have also ordered for the inlet valve. These I'm going to give to Alutrim because they still have uh, my head off the engine so they can put them in. Stainless steel is very good when you're going to put a turbo on your car because they can handle a lot more heat. So if you are going to turbocharge your car I should definitely I definitely recommend you to put the stainless steel valves in the head these two are the ones that we are going to be focusing on today because these are the pistons and these are the, the connecting rods this head gasket will not go in today and also these bolts for the head will not go in today because as I said I don't have the head so we can put uh, these aside and here we have the pistons. And would you look at that? They look tremendous. And they weigh a lot less than the original piston. And yeah, this will be awesome. And if we take a quick look at the connecting rods. Yeah, look at that. That is awesome. One of those. Yeah. Yeah, that will be awesome. And also remember when you put something like this together that you always read the instructions that follows and that you lubricate everything well and First of all, that you clean all of the the threads on the bolts and everything and then you put on the RRP lube because if you don't then you'll have a faulty torque figure. And also when you install like the piston rings that I will show you in a little bit that you put the correct side up and we will also prepare, um, prepare the piston rings for uh, a, a turbo setup because they have need to have like different uh, end gaps if you run turbo if you run uh, naturally aspirated or if you run nitrous they need all need uh, different uh, gaps uh, ring gaps I will show you but before we go ahead and assemble the pistons the first thing that I will do is put in the crankshaft so now I will clean everything well make sure there's no dust left and when I put it in the crankshaft I will make sure that I lubricate everything with this uh, bearing guard this is a special kind of uh, 
oil lube that will stay there because if it takes a while before you have the engine up and running and you use uh, normal engine oil to lubricate everything there will be nothing left when you start the engine and of course you should always crank an engine on like the star motor for when you start it off for the first time but it's always good to have that uh, extra lubrication left inside the crankshaft and around the pistons so that we know there is no damage that will happen to the engine. Yeah, I will now start. Now the crankshaft is uh, in the engine and the bolts are torqued down to the correct amount of force so we can go ahead and move on to the pistons. And here I have laid out everything on the table so we can have a good picture of uh, what are going together and what needs to be done. And the first thing we are going to do is to prepare the piston rings and you may be wondering what, what I mean by that is that when you buy pistons you get instructions and it's very important that you follow these because as you can see here we have different uh, types of engine setup. If you run nitrous you want to have a lot bigger ring gap and here when we have like running on the street with a turbo there's one ring gap for the top ring and one ring gap for the second one. So we are now going to put the rings into the engine and make sure that we have the correct amount of gap and also you see here they have instruction on uh, where they want the ring gaps to be so none of them align and also which is the top and which is uh, down on the ring and how the ring gap should look it shouldn't look like this it should look like this so yeah now I will go ahead and show you what I mean by measuring out the ring gap yes and this is how you do to measure your uh, piston ring gap. What you need is one of your pistons and also the rings. And now you need to know which one is the top one, the first one, the second one and the third one. And the third one is always the one that is sort of looks like this because this is the oil ring as it's called and this has two small ones that is going on in the same uh, line with it down here. But I know that 
these two that this is the first ring and this is the second ring so now I know that the piston ring gap for the first ring is uh, should be 0 0.45 so to measure this I'll put, put the piston away I will put in the, the piston ring into one of the cylinders careful so it's exactly like that and then you take and then you take your piston and you put in your piston to cylinder to and I compare like the first uh, ring gap on the piston to like the top of the the block so I know that it is, that it is level like this and this is why I put the piston in I'll try to give you a better angle so you see what I mean and you can see if the camera wants to focus yeah you can see like the first uh, ring gap is even with the, the engine block so now I know that the the piston ring is level inside of the block and I will try to show you how I measure the ring gap I'll put, a, put away the piston and then I take uh, one of these this is, this is a measuring tool that you can get, get at uh, most of the basic normal uh, hardware stores and I know that the first ring gap should be 0 0.45 and I don't have one for that, so I will use the the 15 and the and the 30. So, and I will now try to measure, but I can see already now that it won't that it won't fit inside here. But I can see that uh, the biggest one of them is. Uh, just fitting in there so I know that I need to remove about 0 0.15 millimeters and now I will only remove on one side I will not be removing on both sides yes now I have enough uh, ring gap so now I can go ahead and do the same of all of the rings and assemble the pistons Yes, now is all of the piston rings uh, put on, so now we can go ahead and put the rods to the piston. And what you do is uh, you take uh, these, they come with the, the pistons. Take them out and they are just like a simple lock ring like this. And in your piston you have like the first, yeah, like your first little step there, is where it's going into. Yeah, you push it in, into the slide. Then we will take some of this and put it on to here. Now we can start to put it in from the way where we didn't put one of the locking rings then you take a, a rod and then you just slide on the piston through the connecting rod and into the other side and then we take our second uh, locking pin Yes, there we have it, an assembled piston. Now the pistons are finally put together, we can now go ahead and lube up the piston rings and lube up the cylinder walls, put in the bearings and fit the pistons into the engine block.
sure when you do this that you get lube all over the threads and under the head of the bolt so that you don't have any friction left when you torque the bolts. And also make sure that you turn these the correct way. These have numbers on there and you have the same number on the correct side of the, the rod so that you have, and also you can see you have a little thingy there. It's the same one on this side, so that you have them on the same side. Finally the pistons are inside the engine and the fitting installation went nicely and as I said you can never use enough lubrication and make sure you use uh, something like this that what I used the, the bearing guard because if you use normal engine oil and it will take a couple of months or something before you start up the engine for the first time there will be no lubrication left inside of the cylinders. And here we have the connecting rods, the installation went very nicely. It was a little bit fiddly to get in the bearings correctly, but now they are in place. And I did all of the bolts with 40 newton millimeters, and then I turned the engine around a couple of times, and then I did all of the bolts with 61 newton millimeters. And now we can go ahead and uh, paint the engine. Yes, this will be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. The, all of the websites where I buy my parts from will be linked in the description. Remember to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.